Good morning, Charlotte. Good well, morning, Carolyn. Welcome to the Friday Happy Place of Carolyn Williams show. It's um, a big up on a, on a Friday and I've shouted out on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram for you to introduce you as somebody who is the other part of Sino Bounds. That's right. So Charlotte, can you uh, pronounce your surname? Because that's the other one that's a little tongue twister. <laughs> it's a Swedish surname. And it's, well, in Swedish it's Fagegård. In English I say Fagegård. Fagegård. Yeah. Yes. But there's no U in it, is there? No. 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 So it's Charlotte Fagegård. Very unusual. It's a very unusual surname. And then I got the Charlotte without an E as well. So it's all complicating things. <laughs> Charlotte Fagegård. That's it, you got it. Charlotte, you look absolutely beautifully framed with all these colours, the cushions, the dress, your smile, and that lovely picture at the back. Tell me about the picture behind you. So the picture behind me um, happened when I was painting what I call my sunshine office. Uh, so during the pandemic that we've been going through, um, I wanted a really bright yellow sunshine office. And I wanted a lovely picture in here. And um, I asked Jamie, um, would he do something? So he painted a heart, but it's actually two people looking at each other, um, which was beautiful. So he was outside painting that while I did all the decorating inside. So I'm very fond of that. It's a very special memory. It must be. What part do you play in See No Bounds, Charlotte? The part of playing Sino Bounds is that I started off doing the admin because we used to be specialising in more of a disability products and Jamie is a motivational speaker so a lot of our work um, was within schools and learning centres and I managed Jamie which is a full-time job. <laughs> But um, during the pandemic, um, obviously things changed a little bit and we took the opportunity to expand and I finally feel that we have found a real drive to what we do. We've extended the platform and I'm really, really passionate about the way it's going because it's just flown away. And it shows you sometimes, um, I've had a few businesses before and I think sometimes like we were talking about earlier before the show, when you let go and you finally kind of just find the right niche and you go for it, anything can happen. And that's where I feel that we are at the moment. And it's just been so lovely to meet like yourself and so many other really, really lovely people along the way. Um, and it's strange. We were talking to someone yesterday and um, it was our bank manager, actually. And we used to meet her a lot at events. And she was saying about going out and meeting people. And it seems like a lifetime ago when we went to those large events, you know, and speaking to people. And I said to Jamie yesterday, I said, I'm really proud of what we've achieved literally with Zoom and being at home and working from home and expanding. And um, so, yeah, I'm really, really excited about what the future has to bring as well. That's energy there. And one of my strap lines is be the energy you want to attract. And, it's obviously, and that's obviously what's happened here. I've seen your uh, responses to me on Facebook and on Messenger. So I've given two plugs there for Facebook and Messenger. And they've all come back with such a lot of energy and love and reality. Um, so that's a compliment to you. What would you say is your why, Charlotte? My why is my passion and my passion is people. Um, people is what I've always surrounded myself with. Um, I've been uh, working within events and hospitality for a very long time. And I'm one of the lucky ones as well because I've always loved what I did. Um, and, and only a few years ago, I actually went into something that I felt like I had to do. And um, it was a little bit of a different journey, but I've always, really really worked with my passion and what I wanted to do um, and I find it very hard to do something that I don't believe in so what we're doing now I, I'm, I'm so passionate about because it also brings me to people but in a different way in a very different way from hospitality um, and I love working with young people I love working with um, sort of teenagers and people that are starting out in life 
Um, and when I had my restaurant, I had a very young team and training them was part of my passion. So to be able to do something again, which is in a different world, um, because I wanted to get out of that fast pace sort of hospitality industry and be able to encourage working with young people again, um, which we're doing with our young entrepreneurship program is, is just going to be amazing. Uh, we meet so many lovely, lovely young people um, and sometimes with a lot of disabilities and it's a lot of red tape when you want to start out in life. Um, you can have great ideas, but you don't get anyone to invest in you. Um, and we, we're now in a position at the moment to invest in money, but we've got an amazing hub where we have really experienced business owners who've been going for a long time, anything from banks to lawyers uh, to accountants and coaching. Um, and it's just really, that's why we started the hub and the hub is the heart of the business. Um, so we are going to be able to develop the young people into basically finding um, a passion around the business owners that we have in the hub and be able to help young people and invest in them because they are at the end of the day, they they the future. Um, and I love coaching young people. They just full of energy. They just got such a drive. Um, and sometimes you can also you can help them with that drive. And I found that, I found that really exciting. That's signposting. And uh, the post I put this morning on um, the social media platforms was about, are you waiting or are you creating? And it sounds as if through COVID, where you could actually just sit there, you've done the opposite and so have I. And obviously that's what's attracted us together in that we've created something that is um, signposting. So I can say quite um, categorically and real here that you were walking me through your creative uh, listing part of the hub yesterday. Yes, so if, yeah. if somebody had a great um, idea, a venture, a brand, talk us through it in terms of your hub and how you, you reach that listing. We, this we had all the platforms in the scene events previously. What we've done during lockdown is basically just extended it. Um, none, everyone who knows me and also Jamie knows that we're not very good at just sitting still and, and not doing anything. And I sidelined there, but we were meant to be up Everest in May and Everest Base Camp. And obviously that didn't happen. So we were never going to sort of sit and not do anything. And the idea came to expand Sina Bams and the idea came um, to expand on the hub um, came from um, my brother uh, lives in Sweden and he has mental health issues and basically they make things and that's that kind of money generates activities um, and I just think it's a great way of being able to support what they do in the community so that's where the idea of the community centre sort of started. And we also listened to a lot of people on the radio um, when the pandemic first hit. And there was a lot of older people who didn't know how to set up a Facebook group. They were missing their community. Um, they were missing that they were shut and they used to get help. They used to perhaps go for courses. And we just had one of those little sort of light moments and I sat here and I said to Jamie we got all the platforms we, we can actually do little courses for free um, and that's what we started out doing very very simple courses for people so they can um, they could sort of help themselves to set up a Facebook page or um, and then friends of mine um, were furloughed um, and they got really passion for drawing and jewellery uh, and they wanted to do something like that. They didn't know where to start and they didn't have the funding to do a website. And that's basically where we thought, well, we got the selling platform and we got the marketplace already. And um, so we've set up a shop that links into the hub listing that they got. So everything from the hub listing, which is why I call it the heart of the business, is linked to various services and products. So if you're a teacher, like we got a lovely lady called um, Natasha from Kids Lingo, I absolutely love this concept because she teaches from naught to 11 year olds. And when you learn a second language, um, you peak at eight months, which I find really interesting fact. But so she is listed in the hub 
but she also promotes her courses uh, with French and Spanish uh, with Kids Lingo in our school. Then we also got our podcasts um, and library. So we basically have guest blogs and we also have podcasts with people. Um, and then we have our events board um, where we can promote people's events. So if somebody's listed in the hub, that doesn't stop them. It actually encouraged them to go into the different elements of the platform so they can develop their business or you know they can develop a platform where they're safe um, to be selling in a really, really transparent and easy way. Um, and I, I found that fascinating um, with what we've done with a very close friend of mine who does the pet art. As you know, we got a little Labradoodle and she's my little girl. And we, we got a, actually a Tesney gallery coming up soon because I just, I just love the pictures that she do. So, um, and we've helped her from the start and that's what we want to encourage other people to be able to do, to live and work with their passion that they got, um, which I, I, I find it fascinating and I find it really rewarding as well. Yes, the, the rewards there, listening to you, it's, it sounds like it's a school, a college, a, a, a place to learn, a place to be happy and create. And that springs to mind the lady that I um, had a chat with on Tuesday, which was Fionn Jones, when you talked about illustrations and your, your, um, your, your doggy and her characters of the dragon and children when they are ill and how they relate to teddy bears. So it's wonderful how you can attract people to the house. And so my question... I listened to Fionn actually, um, the show that you did, and I'm having a chat with her later this afternoon. So you brought us together as well. And that's what I want to do. I love the story about the dragon and um, when, when I was little, so my brother would spend a lot of time in hospital and things like that is very, very close to my heart because anything like that helps you as a family to make things a lot easier and brighter when things are quite hard. Um, so I'm really excited about talking to her this afternoon and she's, I'm hoping she's going to want to do a virtual festival with us. So thank you for that. It's a pleasure because I equally um, was able to surface an awful lot of my hospitalization when I was in my 11 and 12. Because at that point, I remember being doing the 11 plus, which was the exam to go on to, to your high school. And uh, instead of doing what other children did at 11, 12, I was hospitalized. So it, it rang a bell. And I remember, which is very re relevant in, in this conversation here, that when I was in this hospital in Germany, because my father had gone across there to, to uh, build the, the relationship up between the South Wales youth and the Southern German youth, um, I was in this strange hospital surrounded by doctors and nurses, you know, and I didn't speak German. But a lot of my visitors brought me Steif, they were called, the, the brand of the um, toys was Steif. And they were bringing me, um, it would be like a giraffe, it would be like an elephant, and you'd play with it like a little puppet. And so the whole board in front of me, while I had my books and cards, was surrounded by these little toys. Oh. <laughs> and there were more that, that were being brought to me by the German young people. And um, so when she was talking about characters, you know, and all this kind of thing, it's true because I'm a living, <laughs> I'm a living person that went through that kind of analogy because I couldn't speak. My, my jaw had been wired because I'd had a facial injury. And so I was just looking at everything. And um, I think it's the imagination, isn't it? And it's the warmth and the love that you create in that imaginative storyline. So I'm chuffed, the word is chuffed, that you two are coming together because I can see the synergy. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. So on that note of synergy, how can Carolyn Williams, the show, help you further, you and Jamie? Because I'm fascinated by your relationship. Um, I, I've spoken to Jamie, who is obviously a big, big, personality and I see you now the flower and and the beauty as a, a huge feminine personality with him so explain to us how you met and what happened there 
So um, we met, I, I lived in a really beautiful little cottage. Um, I had split up from a partner two years previously who I'd been with for 25 years, so a very long time. And um, I had those two years in this beautiful little cottage with my chickens and my dog um, and um, kind of a little bit of finding yourself kind of moment because when you've been in a relationship for such a long time you you tend to be a unit and it can sometimes be quite hard to know who you are again um, and it was just really lovely I was very lucky to have um, a couple of housemates as well who were absolutely adorable Tony and Emily and they very close to my heart and coming to our wedding next year so um, I was, it was two years and I kind of thought that I need to get out there again, but I'm, I wasn't quite sure how you do it all, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not a person, I love people, but I don't um, really like to kind of go on these dates and I find it quite fake. And, you know, when I, I obviously worked in that environment for a long time. And um, anyway, I went out for a date for a drink with Jamie and um, we really, enjoyed the night and everything like that and then um, afterwards we spoke and I'm very honest um, and as you probably noticed with Jamie he's very black and white too yes um, and as, as I sort of said what did you think and I said well I said I really really liked you but you know it didn't really click did it and he, we were laughing about it I was coming back from Copenhagen that Friday and um, he said, well, should we just meet up for a, a bit of tapas tonight? I said, yeah, that'd be great. And we decided by this point we were going to be friends. Um, and uh, we met up for a bit of tapas and it just clicked from there on, I think. And the next day he came over uh, to my house for dinner. And I don't think he actually left after that. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> it was just a really... He was just, we realized, I think we were, I was very nervous. And I'm, like I said, I'm not very good in those situations. I come across sometimes as a little bit, um, because I'm so, I get nervous. I come across as a little bit overconfident sometimes. Um, and a little bit sort of people find me a little bit hard until they get to know it. And um, it was just, uh, he was just such a personality and realized that we had so much in common because we love the outdoors. Um, it's everything for me. That's my happy space. Um, I love the camper van and I love traveling um, and he had a camper van at the time so that was a that was a big plus uh, and um, yeah we just we just realized that now, I think because we decided to become friends it just relaxed everything and we actually just spoke as, as friends and it just clicked and we realized that we had everything that we liked together so uh, we got engaged this year on the 12th of May. Um, we were meant to be, um, like I mentioned earlier, on Everest Base Camp. Um, but I'm really, really happy that we weren't because it actually means that we can go up to Mbalem, where we live, um, every year on the 12th. And we can remember that moment because we wouldn't be able to do base camp every year. So I'm really chuffed. He, he made me this ring, um, which is out of a bolt because obviously we were in lockdown. Um, so he presented me with a bolt, um, which was quite interesting because I didn't really know what to say to that. But, um, <laughs> but I've got a ring that looks like sort of a, a gold ring with a bolt. And then we found another ring on, um, on um, an auction. So we got it delivered, which was lovely because um, I love old things as well. I'm very much into sort of my antiques and, and something that's got history. Um, which is also something that we have in common. Um, and of course, walking and hiking. Um, and I, I found what I absolutely fell in love with, with Jamie is his spirit and his determination. Um, you know, never ever once will he say, you know, he will say he's having a muddy puddle day, like he calls them. Um, but his spirit and his enthusiasm and his never giving up kind of attitude, if you tell him don't do it, he will. Um, and I, I'm very much the same like that. People always said when I was younger, oh, you can't do that or you're not going to be able to do that. I come from a very small town in Sweden um, and I grew up kind of like really, oh, nobody traveled, nobody went anywhere. And that's all I wanted to do. So at the age of 14, um, I signed up to have my own flat and I was very independent and, and I just wanted to travel, which is what I did for years and years. But it's, it's that that kind of got us together, that spirit and 
the attitude that we have towards life is very, very similar. So I'm very, very lucky to have found someone like that. Um, it's just every day is, is quite exciting. <laughs> it's a very special story and it comes alive when you talk about it because when I spoke to him, he does the same thing. There's this glow and hearing he, you and watching you, the glow is there. So it's, it's very energized and a, a happy place to be and a happy story. And similar to mine in terms of I came from a little town and wanted, I think, after the age of uh, 14, if I remember, to 13, 14, to escape it, the smallness, the claustrophobicness, the smothering. And um, I remember thinking, no, I've got to become independent and I've got to travel. And I think that, that that's similar. And so there's a lot of synergy in that. In terms of um, your why, apart from the fact that you obviously are in a relationship, how does it work in terms of the brands and See No Bounds? Explain to us what See No Bounds means. See No Bounds, we got very, very different roles within the company, um, which I think most people who work with us understand quite quickly. Um, I, I've come from a very sort of business background and business is really passionate for me as well because I, I, I love bringing business to life. Um, Jamie is very much the technical um, he's full of ideas I mean every day is an idea and it's like whoa and it explodes and and then we got to do this and this and this and I'm, I'm kind of um, I get really really excited um, and very passionate and then I start putting them into filtering through how it's going to work and how we're going to do it um, and that's very much how we work so he's the technical let's do it all, uh, we can do anything. And I'm very much the same, but I kind of come back to Earth a little bit and then we start working together of how it's actually going to turn out and, and um, how we're going to focus on different things at different times. Because I think that's very important when you're running a business. You, you've got to be fast growing, um, especially now with everything being virtual, everything is very accessible, you've got to have the ideas and you know, you've got to have the energy as well. Um, you can't just wait for a few months and say, oh, I do that next month. You know, it just doesn't happen anymore. It's got to be fast. It's got to be quick. And what you say today is gone tomorrow. You know, it's, it's, that's the life we're kind of living. Um, but I, I get really excited about that. And that's why I love working with young people. Um, Jamie's got an, a way with young people that I I never really seen. He just folk, he just gets really connected with them. Um, while it, I come across as more of the teacher, I think. So it's it's a balance. It's we really balanced like that, and I think that's why it works so well to work together. And I do think as well when you do work together in a business, if your partners, um, if it's business partners or if it's relationship. You've got to have defined roles because I think if you're trying to do the same thing, so for example, in a restaurant, if you're both chefing, it's very, very, very difficult. If you're running front of house and your partner's running the, the kitchen, you've got very defined roles. And I think that is one of the keys that I find um, works within business if you're going to do it together because uh, you can't both be in charge of the same things. I don't think that I don't think that's a good recipe. No, it's a compliment, isn't it? It's, it's complementary in terms of yeah. how you do it. And understanding. And understanding. Yeah. Discovering and uncovering is what I do in this show. Discovering the voice. You have a voice. It sounds a Swedish voice that is in Wales. And I'm so pleased that it is in Wales. <laughs> I love Wales. I've travelled, like I said, I've travelled all around the world. And this is the place that I just felt at home. Um, I, whenever we travelled, when we were looking, I, I moved here because we found um, a restaurant here. And wherever we travelled, um, everyone was just so friendly. Um, and I love the fact that you're very close to the mountains, the sea, you know, the river. But you also have, you know, cities not very far away as well. Because for me, that was important when I moved from London. It's less important now, but at the time that was very important for me to be able to sort of 
be able to reach out to cities as well as um, being in the countryside. Yes. Is there a part of um, Wales that you specially, specifically like, other than the restaurant? Brecon Beacon. Yes. Yeah, I absolutely love it there. My, my, the mountains, there's something about mountains. They always stay, they always there, they always, they're just solid, aren't they? You know, they're not going to move anywhere. And being amongst the mountains and nature is, is something that I absolutely, that's my happy place. That's when I kind of get headspace and, and I, I love it. I absolutely love that. J Jamie was talking about his happy place has been in the mountainside and camping with you and your um, pet. So is that the same for you in terms of the Bracken Beacons? Is that how you feel your, is your happy place? Absolutely. Um, there's a photo of us. We met some really lovely people um, just after lockdown ended. We went up to the back of Penivan, uh, the north side, and it's a beautiful car park there. And we're part members of National Trust. Um, and we were, met some people from Czech um, and they were camping next to us and we had a really lovely chat and one of them is actually he's an architect um, but he's also very passionate about photography and he took a photograph of us um, that we're sitting by the fire and every time I look at it which is actually up on my Facebook but every time I look at that I think he just he just managed to picture our happy place that is my happy place and I you know you can't because he just took it when he, we didn't notice that he took it um it, it just absolutely is everything that I would have wanted a photograph um it's it just says it all because I, I love I love that if we and this is also part of the, what we wanted to do with uh, Tina Bounds because Tina Bounds want to travel so we're hoping to expand out and be able to go to different you know regions and um, both in Wales and the UK um, and globally and it, that's part of what we want to establish so we can move with Tina Bounds um, obviously not at the moment but we will and working in beautiful places and, and be able to travel and run an online community at the same time it's it's really incredible i find i find it really really exciting i hear the passion who is it that you would like to um reach out to in terms of seeing a through my show you know who would be the ideal kind of brand or idea are amazing to work with we find that they get the concept of what we're doing um I really, really like to help people. That's why we set up the community center as well. Yes. Um, so business, people who want to start up a business, because what I found um, when I started out, I mean, I didn't have millions. Um, I sold a property and, and invested in another property with a, with a restaurant. Um, and what I find sometimes is that people focus so much on, oh, I've got to have the right website. I've got to have this. I've got to have that. I've got to have thousands of pounds in the bank and you don't you need your passion and what I call elbow grease you really need to want to work hard um, because running your own business is not easy um, it's something that you 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 got to love what you do um, and um, you really got to have a passion for what you do and that's why I love helping other people that want to start up their own businesses old and young um because sometimes people just focus so much on what they can't do and i've always been very much a person that focus on what you can do and nothing is impossible and that comes that comes from my grandma and um, my grandma was just and funny enough she'd never traveled out of the little county that i come from in sweden but it was just incredible that a person that's never been outside of that county could give me the energy to want to do all the things and show me that nothing is ever impossible. She was always there and going, you can do anything. You can do whatever you want, you know, and, and that's the spirit that I grew up with. And, you know, people often, people often, um, a lot of my friends sometimes say, because they know that I'm, very energetic they know that I work very hard and when I sort of said right I'm going to set up my own business again they said oh yeah but Charlotte don't work too hard now you know you know you always throw yourself into these and I said I do but I love it and I think I think being an entrepreneur um 
is something that you don't really necessarily kind of choose. You don't think when you leave university or, or school or, you know, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because you just have business ideas and you, you collect them and you think, oh, I can maybe do this or I can do that. Or, you know, ideas just keep popping up. Um, and when the right idea comes across, you think, actually, I can work with this. I can do something with that. That's when you start to put a business plan together. And I, I did my first business plan, I think, when I was about 16. I was setting up a beauty salon and I was doing this. And I, let, I showed a friend of mine the other day, and we're actually going to put it into practice um, for the Young Entrepreneurship Program because she said that I should use it. Um, I didn't really thought I'd never thought about using it but it was so detailed um, and I think that's what happens when you want to do something for yourself and you have a passion of working with what you want to work with um, I think that's when you become sort of an entrepreneur or a business uh, woman or whatever you know whatever you want to call it but I, lo I love the passion of working for myself and being able to do the ideas and being able to help other people to be able to establish their dreams as well um because not not everyone find it easy and I, I find it easy to see outside of the box and yeah. i find it easy to see the positive in things um, and yeah. even when things are quite tough i hear that and the answer that you've given is about your role model in terms of your grandma is um the swedish grandma which you feel is the spirit, and I'm somebody equally, that there is a spirit in the family always that seems to become the strongest influence. And you've explained that. I, I will bring this to a close because um, the energy is so high here between you and I that it's alive, it's real, even though we're virtual talking to each other. Uh, we've reached out because we have what you have that the igniting of sparks and i wish you a wonderful wonderful journey and for people who want to get in touch with you can you let them know how they do that yeah at cena burns and we're on twitter instagram linkedin and on facebook and you can also go to um cenabounds.co.uk um, you pretty much find us everywhere and we are happy to talk to anyone even if you just want to have a little bit of advice or or just want to sort of reach out to someone and say I've got this idea what do you think and um, the one thing you've got to be aware of is that we are honest and um, we are very black and white I'm a little bit less I'd probably say it in a different way than Jamie but you know we would really really like to help you so if you have an idea that you've got and you want to speak to somebody about get in touch please because i love i love to help and i love to speak to people and that, that's part of my flavor in terms of discovering and uncovering and building confidence uh to be heard in terms of the voice your voice is loud and clear jamie's voice is loud and clear and it's wonderful to have that opportunity and i would say the um the backup for a startup so it's an incredible place to be and I wish you both well and have a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. And that lovely chat with Fionn Jones this afternoon. I see yes. things happening there. I see something happening there. Absolutely. And that's you that brought that together. So I'm really, really, sometimes the virtual meetings and what we're you know, doing at the moment, it just brings you to different spirits and different people that you might not have met otherwise. So thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure and to see all the colours and you in your glory there in the room and to meet you at last, having sort of had this response through Facebook and Messenger, to see you is, is much, much better. So thank you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.